So for a lot of teams, it's off-season mode or off-season time. Basically, what we're looking at are, do we get a new manager? Who do we re-sign? Who do we let go? Who do we try to pick up in free agency? And because of that, I want to bring off-season rebuilds back to the channel. We're going to slowly work our way through every single team, starting with the teams who didn't make the postseason. I know we still have postseason baseball. We have the World Series to look forward to. But I think it's time to start off-season rebuilds. We're at that point of the year where... It's, you know, free agencies right around the corner, maybe some winter meetings and things like that. So let's let's start off with a team who's got a really exciting future. The Padres already announced they're going in a different direction. They need a new manager because they fired their current one. And with a young core, really solid pitching core, and then some young players coming up like Tatis, Urias, I think this team's going to look really good in a couple seasons. Are they going to get Joe Madden? Who are they going to get as manager? Who knows? But let's start an off-season rebuild. If you guys want to see another one at tomorrow, let's hit 500 likes on today's video, and I'll bring another off-season rebuild to you guys. If you guys know who you want to see for the next off-season rebuild, put it in the comment section down below, and we'll make it happen. So, with that being said, the only stipulation for these rebuilds is we are going to start after the first season. I'm just going to simulate through the first season, and then we're going to start in the offseason. So let's go take a look at this Padres roster. So I want to quickly look at the roster just to kind of give myself an idea of who I want to keep, who I want to get rid of, things like that heading into the second season. So when we look into it, starting pitching looks solid. You know, we got Paddock. Garrick Richards is not a too bad pitcher for a season or two. Robbie Erlin, Matt Strom might be moved to the bullpen. Um, I feel like they might be used a little bit better there. Joey Lucchese is good. Andrea Morejon, Quantrill, Denilson Lamets finished the season so good. Um, Perdomo, Lauer, Margavicious. There's a lot of good pitching prospects. I feel like we could maybe trade one for a little bit better of a, a starter, but we'll have to wait and see what happens. Relief pitching. Probably an area I want to strengthen. Not too many like really good arms that I'm looking to keep. There's a couple okay arms, but we'll have to wait and see. Kirby Yates, really solid closer. I think we're set there. Catchers, I'm not really sold on. Hedges, Mejia, I, I don't know. I'm not really sold on them. Eric Hosmer had an okay season this year, but is he really worth the 20 million that they're paying him? I feel like that's really restricting us going forward with our salary. Next up, Ian Kinsler. Might be a player I look to move in the second year for maybe someone with a little bit more potential, a little bit younger. We do have Luis Urias, who if he can learn to swing the bat, I think will be a really good major leaguer in the future. Third third base, a lot of money invested in Manny Machado. Definitely is going to be our third baseman. Shortstop, Tatis, he's not going anywhere. Left field, I think another player who's underperforming for the Padres and really isn't living up to the hype, Will Myers. Paying him 11, 12 million a season to hit you an average of 250. I just don't think that's good enough. Yes, he had two really good years, but I don't know. He might, I think he's number one on my list to get rid of. We have Margot, Franchi Cordero, Taylor Trammell, Hunter Renfro. We have some good outfielders. If we can get them involved, I think we're really set. Like I mentioned, this team's got a really good young core. I'll see you guys in the off season of season one. Really the one player I'm looking to move, maybe Garrett Richards, and then maybe Will Myers. But Will Myers is probably number one on the list. So as we head into the offseason, these are exclusive negotiations. Craig Stammen has actually held this value really well. I just don't think he's going to for next season, so I'm going to let him walk. Adam Warren, how did he do this year? Not too bad at the age of 32. I'd be cool with giving him like a, a one-year 2.5, maybe 2.6 deal. That's not too bad. Aaron Loop, I just, we're going to wait off on that. We definitely need to find a new... Uh, manager, so I'm gonna do that right now, and then we'll head into contracts. Alrighty, for arbitration, um, let's take a look, see how everybody did. Edwards Jr. is probably a player I'm gonna look to trade. Erlin was pretty solid. Strom was okay, might be a player I look to trade. He's definitely gonna have some value, or we move him to the bullpen, like I've mentioned. And then the rest of the guys, let's take a look at Hedges. Yikes, uh, Renfro, eh, Margot, yikes, yikes, yikes. Um, and then these guys, maybe Greg Garcia back, maybe not. Greg Garcia is not a bad platoon player. Jankowski is kind of like that, that platoon outfielder. He usually does pretty well as well. So we'll probably give everybody arbitration. And then contracts wise, we definitely want to bring most of these guys back. So really the only one that probably wouldn't get one is Robert Stock. He actually had a pretty good year. Um, so we probably will bring everybody back too. Before we get into any free agency or anything, I wanted to open up a little bit more cap space and we're going to acquire the AL home run leader in Jorge Soler. He had a really good year last year, 40 home runs. 
When I say home run leader, I mean in real life. But 40 home runs, 120 RBIs, 39 doubles. We're going to move him to left just because his fielding's a little meh. And I think with his bat, we're really going to get a solid left fielder. We're going to trade Esteban Quiroz and then uh, Will Myers, a player I was looking to move. Alrighty, so to start season two, technically our season one since we're coming out of the offseason, let's take a look at what we did in free agency. We obviously made that trade of Will Myers. And I may have gone a little overboard in signing starting pitchers. I didn't realize we had that many starting pitchers in the roster. But Luis Gohara was available. He's got good potential. He's going to have some trade value. That's more of what I was looking for here. Um, Luis Ranifo is going to be our new Ian Kinsler, our backup infielder. And we're going to trade Ian Kinsler to open up a little salary space. Obviously, we brought in Jorge Soler through the trade. Andres Munoz was already here. Um... So was Batten, but then JJ Turley was available and a potential starting pitcher. I figured why not bring him in? Nick Kingham, a long reliever was available, decided to bring him in and Les Snare was also available. So I kind of went a little bit too hard on the, the, the starting pitchers who were available. That was it for free agency. Really, there was no big names available that I liked that really fit our team plus the way our team looks we actually have a really solid team i didn't want to make too many changes come our first season out of the off season so this is what we're kind of looking like to start the year i like it a lot not much has changed actually nothing's really changed um just the addition of luis ranifo maybe trade ian kinsler for another middle infielder or maybe even an outfielder probably another middle infielder but when you look at our our pitching depth now we got Quantrill, Nix, Margavicious, Margavicious, Margavicic, whatever his name is. We have Lauer, Lamette, Gohara, Baez, Diaz. Uh, like we have we have we have too much pitch, too many pitchers, um, is what I'm trying to say. Um, and then our lineup's looking a little thin, so we definitely want to try to find a way to maybe strengthen this uh, team a little bit. So I'm going to make a couple trades. I'll show you guys along the way, and then we'll get started with this season. So I said that catcher was an area I was looking to improve, and we're actually going to make a trade with the Cubs. Wilson Contreras is going to be joining us for Francisco Mejia, Ian Kinsler, and Eric Lauer. Didn't mean to hit my mic, but I feel like he's a really good, well-rounded catcher. Um, he hit 269 last year. Nice. 18 home runs, 65 RBIs. It's not a bad season. I also looked at Gary Sanchez, but I feel like he's just a really common catcher. And I feel like it's pretty difficult to trade for Contreras. So let's try to get him for once. Um, I felt okay trading away one of our prospects because we have so many pitching prospects. With that being said, I might look to add... I don't think I might add anybody else. I kind of want to see how the team does like this because... Um, we're actually a really strong team. I really like the team that we have now with the addition of Contreras, who's actually knows how to hit a baseball. I think we're in a good spot. Maybe add another bench bat. But outside of that, we look really strong and I like the team that we've put together. So let's see how this season plays out. And I'll see you guys probably at the end of this year. All right. So unfortunately, we didn't make the postseason. And I'm going to show you why, because it actually sucks. We had a really good part of the like we just had a really good year and then the last month really screwed us so you can see 84 and 78 and then when you look at how our september went oh man we only won one two three four five six seven eight nine ten it's ten games but oh we were uh we what 74 and something before we went into this month and we just we could have i have a feeling we definitely had a chance to make the postseason um the the co the division's gonna be tough but the wild card man four games out that's tough we're the sixth ranked team ninth in contact third in speed third in defense 11th in pitching and fifth in power so we're a very good ranked team it's just we we struggled a li little bit towards the end let's take a look at league leaders uh triples it said for um tatis jr and then when we take a look at our notifications we had two gold glovers Luis Urias and Manny Machado MVP went to Cody Bellinger and Vlad Jr hitting 53 home runs while also hitting 307 yikes Chris Sale was Cy Young along with Garrett Cole at um reliever of the year was Kenley Jansen and Osuna and then rookie of the year went to Jimmy Laker who was actually a drafted player holy cow he looks good and then Helio Ramos of the Giants okay 
Pretty interesting to see that there. So let's just take a look, see how things went. Chris Paddock had a very good year. He's already up to a 92. Matt Strom, a player I actually consider moving to the bullpen. Pretty solid season. Definitely bounced back from last year. Joey Lucchese um, had a tough year. Last year, he had a really good year. Um, Garrett Richards struggled a little bit. His contract does expire this year, though. So we'll probably look to bring up one of our, our pitchers from the farm system. We got Quantrill, Knicks, Lamette. We've got options for sure. And then Adrian Morahone struggling a little bit, but definitely improving. Robbie Erlin as our long reliever did quite well. Munoz did well. Stock did well. Again, I'm actually impressed with what Stock's doing. Um, Adam Warren struggled a little bit, a little bit. Carl Edwards Jr. did a little bit better, which is good to see in that setup role. Um, Jose Castillo struggled a bit, so we'll just move him out of that setup role. And then Kirby Yates was pretty solid. He does become a free agent this year. I might bring him back for another year. It all depends on how much money he wants and if there's other good closers available. On our bench, Renifo, Hedges, Margot, and Jankowski. Jankowski did pretty well, up to a 74. Um, that's good to see. We brought in Ben Zobris out of free agency just for a season. I felt like we needed one more bench bat. And you can see he was more of our DH, and he actually did quite well. Pretty solid. Um, Tatis pretty solid season i'm gonna take that 270 average yes machado 260 with 39 home runs at 102 rbis okay um how many doubles did tatis have 35 and then 10 triples Soler had himself quite a year 29 home runs 75 rbis 24 doubles not as good as last year but still solid i like to see that hunter renfro 29 home runs almost 100 rbis okay hosmer not terrible not, not terrible at all i kind of like those numbers that's actually pretty solid I'm pretty happy with those numbers. Urias is getting better. I like to see that as well. Average is slowly kind of creeping up. He hit 281 last year, 245 this year. Hitting a lot of doubles. I saw that. Franchi Cordero is kind of splitting time with Manuel Margot. And uh, he's actually doing pretty well. I don't know if Manuel Margot is going to have much time in the on our team for too much longer. And Wilson Contreras definitely needs to be moved up in the lineup. Um, but yeah, he did pretty well. I kind of want him like... Oh man, where do we put him? Maybe like here. And then kind of go like that. So we'll, we'll we'll definitely move him up in the lineup. I mean, he he's one of our better hitters anyway, so we might as well. And then we'll just kind of go like that. Yeah, that's not too bad. So that's the team. I kind of like it. I kind of like what we've put together. We didn't make the postseason, unfortunately. So let's just keep moving forward. Um, but so far, the team's looking good. The Braves defeat the Astros. And then we need a new third base coach. So... No one retired from us, and we're just going to keep moving forward. Exclusive negotiations. Garrett Richards is good and all, but we have a lot of youth coming up, so I'm cool with using them. Robbie Erlin's been doing solid, so let's just do like a two-year deal, see if he takes that. Um, Adam Warren was good, but I feel like we can definitely get another uh, reliever. And then Kirby Yates. Uh, let's go a one-year deal, because he's still one of the better closers available, and I feel like we might as well pay him, right? So let's get into the off season. 40 man, nothing there. So arbitration wise, uh, how did Austin Hedges do off the bench? A little bit better than last year, not amazing, but we'll bring back everybody arbitration wise and then contracts, we'll definitely give everybody a contract. We'll take a quick look into free agency, see what's available. Um, so we've obviously brought back Kirby Yates. We could have gotten someone like Brad Hand, struggled a little bit actually liam hendricks wouldn't have been a bad option but i'm okay with kirby yates for at least another season i kind of want to bring in one or two arms here uh maybe like keone kella not too bad blake trinan again not too bad at all he would definitely be our our setup guy and then we need to i'm gonna let one of our youngsters come up for our starting pitching um see how that goes and if we need to we can always make a change season three and i feel like offensively we're set so that's kind of what we're looking at free agency mostly relief help and uh, let's get into the next season so we're into season two of our rebuild we'll have one more after this but the team we actually have is pretty sick so we really didn't make too many changes in free agency as you guys can see just keona kella is joining the squad so when we look at the rotation denilson lamette is actually up to an 80 i'm gonna give him one season to see how he does because we still have cal quantrill who looks like a beast and i think he's gonna be really good um this season or next year so i definitely want to get him involved i mean look at all these pitchers that we have we definitely could probably trade someone um and get maybe 
maybe another really strong pitcher because Joey Lucchese is good, Strom's good, Morejon's good, but I feel like we could get one more really good starting pitcher and I think that would really solidify the team. You guys can see the bullpen's looking really strong as well. Erlin, Munoz, Edwards, Kayla, Yates, everyone is actually pretty high rated. I kind of like this bullpen. We could probably even get someone else in there. Um, that strengthens it a little bit more with some of our prospects. When you look at our lineup, I mean, this is a scary lineup. Franchi Cordero's got a little bit of pop. He's developing. Margot, I'm giving him this season. This is his last season to prove to me that he can play. If not, we'll be in the market for a new center fielder. Um, and then um, even our bench isn't too bad. Josh Naylor's only up because he's kind of got a bigger contract and he's already been in the majors before. But when you look at some of our prospects, CJ Abrams, could be our new bench bat. Uh, Taylor Trammell could come up, maybe be that center fielder that we're looking for. Um, we definitely have some other players, Xavier Edwards. So we're looking pretty good there. And I mean, even our pitching, like I could definitely go and trade all these prospects and obviously get a super team, but that kind of defeats the point of the rebuild. It's all about having some fun. You guys can see, we actually have a little bit of budget to work with. So I still feel like we could make some really big splashes come free agency when we look at who's going to be leaving the team kirby yates is a possibility solaire is a possibility um but not really any big contracts so maybe is it time to move away from eric hosmer we'll have to wait and see maybe we can move away from eric hosmer and that would allow us to kind of make a big splash in free agency come next season so that's the team for season two i'm liking it we're letting a lot of players develop and that's a lot of fun of these rebuilds so let's see how season two plays out all right so season two it looks like the development of the players and the changes that we've made have really made this team solid we made the postseason 96 and 66 and we're a wild card team so technically we're, we're, i don't think we're gonna win the division we actually kind of kept it close this year we're only three games back we're the fifth ranked team in baseball contact at 14th speed four defense five pitching five and power five so we're actually a really solid team and in the wild card we held the first spot down by quite a bit. League leaders Kirby Yates had the most saves, so bringing him back was a pretty good decision. Awards Machado won a gold glove. Bryce Harper was the MVP, and then um, JD Martinez was for the American League. Cy Young went to Chris Sale once again, and then Walker Bueller this year. And then let's take a look Brad Hand, Sean Doolittle, and then Drew Waters and Julio Rodriguez. Okay, Julio Rodriguez. Pretty sure it's Mariners prospect, but uh, let's take a look at our bench. Luis Renifo, really solid off the bench. I like to see those number. Austin Hedges is just garbage. Uh, Josh Naylor didn't do too bad in his limited appearances. And then Travis Jankowski is doing pretty good in his appearances as well. Let's take a look at our starting lineup. Tatis, probably not a leadoff hitter, um, especially with those numbers. You can tell he's, he's really not a leadoff hitter. Contreras was okay, probably not a two-spot hitter. We might need to drop him a little bit in the lineup. Machado, not terrible. So something must have done really well in the, the pitching department because I'm looking at our offensive numbers and they're not, they're not amazing, right? They're not like, wow, this guy did really, really good. Uh, we put up a lot of 20, 30, you know, like 20 home run seasons, but I'm assuming this is where things went really well. Chris Paddock, pretty solid season. Um, Lucchese, pretty similar. Strom did very well. Morihon was okay. And uh, Denilson Lamet, okay. All right, might have to get him involved. Cal Quantrill, we'll see. He might take over for uh, Adriel Morihon. Robbie Erland struggled a bit. Munoz did okay. Casillo did okay. Carl Edwards Jr. did very well. Um, Stock did all right. Keon Akella did very well. And then Kirby Yates did well. So it looks like it was just consistency from the team because it like 260 for most hitters, but no one really like stood out and was like, ooh, that's a really good stat line right there, right? So let's just, uh, let's kind of change this up a bit. Just, I don't know. We'll leave it like that, I guess. But let's hop into this game against the Braves because the team's really good but it does we don't have like any stand out like stat or players so far so let's see soroka paddock young aces here we go all righty so the braves lineup in Ciarte, swanson acuna they brought castellanos in freeman donaldson albies william castillo and then soroka i'm pretty sure that's uh wilson castillo's brother um unless it's wellington castillo then we could be 
and a little bit of trouble. Okay, we're in a little bit of trouble there. That's a good start, a double. Um, couldn't bring him in, though. It's Wellington Castillo, not William. What am I talking about? Why did I say Castillo? It's Contreras. Wilson Contreras. I'm losing my mind. I think I'm getting distracted by the fact that we're losing. We're not scoring runs. What's going on here? All right, first and second, no outs. I like that. Can we bring in the run, though? Let's just sack fly him, bring him in. Let's at least get a run on the board. So we got three to one score. Just we're not we're not putting together anything offensively, which is a little disappointing. Um, we're going to take out Paddock. We're going to go to the lefty Erlen. He gets us out of it. Perfect. Like one, two, three. We can't have those innings. Whew, that was huge to get out of that inning. We got three innings to come back. Hosmer starts us off right. Uh, we got a pinch hit here. We can't really sit around and do nothing. We're going to go to Jankowski. <sighs> really? Um, string of righties coming up. Edwards was really good throughout the year. Double play gets us out of it. All right. Liam Hendricks goes one, two, three. All righty. Not the best situation there. And we're down to our final inning. Can we do something here? Oh, boy. Uh, we got to go to the righty. Renifo, please. I just need a base hit here. <sighs> From calling Wilson or Wellington Castillo, William Contre I, I messed up the catchers. I got distracted by that. I started falling behind with the Braves and uh, that's our season. So like I said, offensively, it looked like we struggled a bit. So maybe we need to go and get a, um, a, a really good offensive player because we have some, but it looks like we just weren't producing. Something, something was off. So let's take a look. Exclusive negotiations. Do we bring back Solaire? um yes we do let's do let's do a two-year deal let's do that kirby yates oh, man i'm gonna see if we can find someone else i don't i don't know i don't want to but let's see what's available so nothing to the 40 man arbitration wise definitely gonna give it to everybody um everyone's been like consistent we just need someone to be a standout star. Contracts are all going to be minor leaguers, so we'll give them that. This is where it gets interesting. Do we go for an ace? Do we have the money to go for an ace is another question. Do we go for bullpen help? Do we Our closers, we got some good closers available. Um, catcher, I think we're good with uh, Contreras. First baseman could go Freddie Freeman, but I don't think we have the money for that. Don't want Addison Russell. Chris Bryant's a possibility. Maybe make him our first baseman. Uh, Travis Shaw's there, Michael Franco, shortstop. We don't really need an upgrade, but maybe a second baseman just because um, Urias just doesn't hit the ball well. Soler doesn't really want to come back, it looks like. Maybe we go for Domingo Santana instead. He's a possibility. Okay, definitely a possibility. Look at the beard on this guy. <laughs> but um, Lorenzo Kane, maybe he's our center fielder for a year. We got ooh, Michael Conforto. All right, we're, we're making moves. All right, so I gave Margot his chance in center field and he just he just wasn't taking advantage of it. I've looked at multiple center fielders that we could go for. Brandon Nimmo was a possibility. I was like, okay, he's not too bad. Uh, Almora we go for a lot. Senzel, we haven't gone for in a while, but I just wasn't impressed. And I was kind of looking around. I was like, Springer, we always get him. Ketel Marte, we've been getting him a lot recently. Um, and just looking at other center fielders, there's, there's not a lot of really good center fielders in the major leagues. We can't get Trout. Um, I thought about Kevin, getting Kevin Kiermeyer. I thought looking at his stats for the last couple seasons, he's actually had a really good year. We can get him really easily. But um, the one I'm going to go with, because I don't think we've ever gotten him before, and I think it'd be kind of cool to try someone new, is Victor Robles. I know we're giving up a little bit more. Um, in the trade but he's got decent hitting stats across the board and uh, i feel like last year he had a little bit of a down year i think he's going to come back to like a 270 280 average he's young should develop throughout the season as well and i think we're going to get a pretty solid center fielder here for margot ryan weathers and xavier edwards obviously a lot's going into this trade 
but um I'm, I'm okay with it i think we we've got a decent little trade here for us all right so that's really going to be the only move that we make i thought about bringing up maybe cj abrams his stats are okay maybe taylor trammell but in the end i feel like they're not ready um and they're not really much better than what we currently have up in the majors already when you look at this lineup i mean this is kind of like the weak spot i would probably just go franchi there as our dh and then yeah, we'll just probably go like that. For the most part, the team is scary. Like, very, very scary. Everyone in the starting lineup is 80 or above minus Hosmer. And he's been really consistent for us lately. 20 plus home runs a season. So I'm actually pretty impressed with his production throughout this rebuild. When you look at this team, it is good. Like, look at this starting pitching. We could, and like, we still have players that, like, obviously we could call up that would definitely help us. But our bullpen strong as well probably one of the strongest bullpens we've ever put together and i'm really liking it you guys can see we brought in chapman for i think a two-year deal um i'm liking what we've put together here we 100 should be making the playoffs and uh going far we'll have to wait and see that's that's all up to the uh the mlb gods but i really like this team I'm liking this offseason rebuild so far. Let's finish off this rebuild. Hopefully get a World Series. All right, I think we've created a super team, which means we're getting knocked out first round of the playoffs. I guarantee it. So you can see 106 and 56, we won the division, taking on the winner of the wild card, which means we're getting knocked out right away. It's just it's just meant to be that way. League leaders, Morey Hone had the most wins, which is a player actually considered trading away. And then um, I think I saw saves as well. We had the most saves. Yeah, Chapman was tied for the most saves. So that was a good season for us. Awards, we had Rookie of the Year for Cal Quantrill. And then Delivery of the Man was Chapman. Chris Bryant won MVP. And then Jose Altuve did as well. He hit 40 home runs. Okay. Interesting. Uh, Cy Young was Carlos Rodon and Clayton Kershaw. And then we'll go to reliever, No Reliever of the Year for the AL, apparently. Okay. Um, and then... Chapman was the reliever of the year and you can see he's a he's a closer when used as a closer He's gonna do very well rookie of the year was Cal Quantrill like we've mentioned and Gio Barusa Okay, anyways, let's take a look at our pitching see how things went Chris Paddock is a 99 with a 292 and a 1.11 whip Whew, How did he not win? Cy Young, what did Kershaw do? Okay, okay. Um, Joey Lucchese was really good as well. You can see that's a good season. Cal Quantrill was Rookie of the Year for a good reason. I'm glad we waited to bring him up because now he's just unreal. Denilson Lamette struggled a little bit. Probably a player I should have traded away. Uh, Moray Hone is looking really good as well. I considered letting Denilson Lamette go. Maybe use Jacob Nix or Margavicious, Margavicious, whatever his name is. Uh, Matt Strom is really struggling now which is disappointing to see. Munoz is very good. Castillo's good. Carl Edwards Jr. struggled a little bit this season. Erlin was solid. Kayla and then Chapman. So pitching wise, very, very happy with what we have. A couple players struggled, but for the most part, really solid. We'll take a look at our bench. Um, Austin Hedges had a pretty good year. Uh, Josh Naylor did as well. And Travis Jankowski. If we were to do another season, I definitely would get like CJ Abrams, Taylor Trammell involved because they look like really good prospects. Victor Robles hit about 270, which was better than any year Margot had. 24 home runs. And as our leadoff hitter, I like to see that. Tatis, 280. Good good numbers. 30 home runs. The issue is we're starting to hit like the last year of arbitration and the last year of contracts for a lot of players. So we'd be in a little tricky spot budget-wise. Conforto had himself a year. He's a glitch. Get him anytime you can in franchise. Hunter Renfro had a good year, 37 home runs with 100 RBIs. Manny Machado was okay. Um, hasn't really been like a standout player, except for that first season. That first season was nutty, almost 40 home runs, but pretty solid there. Uh, Wilson Contreras, okay, okay numbers. Um, I think he does a little bit better in real life, but Franchi Cordero struggled a lot. We're just gonna take him out and we're gonna put in, um, do we go Josh Naylor or do we go Jankowski? Let's go Jankowski for that one. Hosmer continues to hit around that 260 mark with a little bit of a power downgrade this year, but still pretty solid numbers. And Luis Urias had an okay season. Better for what he normally does. So for the most part, I'm I'm really actually I'm really happy with the way the team performed. Like very, very happy. Like the team is nutty. Like 
unreal a lot of not look at all those 90s one two three four five six six 90s Luis Urias is right around the corner and then when you go to pitching we have four starters who are 90 um, and then look at our bullpen it's, it's just gross what we've put up um, like we like I've said we've met we won the division we are first in the major leagues six contact six speed five for defense second in pitching and fourth for power um, the team is gross the team is disgusting so we're taking on the Dodgers if we lose I will be so upset and we swept the Dodgers look at that we're taking on the Pirates now um, who's gonna be the first pitcher Cal Quantrill I would want Con Qu Qu Quantrill to pitch but did Paddock go he went a complete game shutout first game oh okay um that was that's good to see 100 that's good to see love it i might even go like that and just go with the four-man rotation i think that's not a bad idea um let's go boom so who's pitching today we're all over the place moray home moray home is not pitching today let's go paddock joey lucchese yeah we'll go like we'll go like that four-man rotation i like it why is joey lucchese going All right, I'll get this. I'll get the pitching lineup set up. All right, I figured it out. <laughs> All right, so game one versus the Pirates. We win. Same thing. Can we keep it going? We lost that one. What happened there? Locasey struggled a bit. That's all right. We win this one. We win this one. And we lost. And we won. So we're in the World Series. We're taking on the Indians. And this is going to be a, this is be a good matchup. I like this one. Uh, Moray Hone's going. So we're just going to move everybody around a little bit Lucchese struggled maybe we go like like that I like that I like that so World Series time versus the Indians can we do it we get off to a good start seven runs in the first game we win the second one seven to six. Third one what is going on three to nothing lead let's go to quick manage let's hop into this game we're the away team progressive field um yeah Quantrill is going to be our starter and then let's just hop into it. Alrighty, let's see what we got here. We're starting off, we're going against Zach Plesek. We gotta get something early started. So looking at their lineup, Mercado, Lakers uh, first season draft pick. I know that they got Rendon, Puig, Reyes, New Renato Nunez at first, Baez, Profar, and Romine. That's a good team. That's a solid team. Um, ooh, okay. Urias couldn't deliver there, that's all right. Robles is back up, Tatis is on. Conforto out. There we go. Renfro gives us a two-run lead. Love to see it. Can we keep going forward? That's a good start. Can we steal second? We do. That's good. Man in scoring position. One out. Base is loaded for Machado. Brings in the run. That's fine. I'll take that. A three-run lead. So far, so good. We're in the sixth here. Quantrill's pitching a, a gem as I say that. He gives up a run, but I'm okay with that. Things are still looking pretty solid. That's not good. We're gonna we're gonna take him out. Um, let's go to Lamet. He walks. He walks. All right, you're done. Let's go to Edwards. Double play. That's huge. That was massive there. Holy cow! Ground out. Ground out. Ground out. Let's go to Kayla. What? What? All right. He's our DH. We're gonna pinch hit. We're gonna go to Renifo. He's going to get hit by the pitch. That's good. Okay. Come on. Bring in the run. Yes. He brought in the run. Takes the lead. No way. And then Tatis goes deep to make it a 7-4 to four ball game. And what we're going to do is we're going to we're gonna make a pitching change. We're going to bring in Chapman. And we're going to enter the game. Alrighty. I like those unis for the Indians. But we got Chapman up. Can we do it here? This is going to be tough. I thought he just took me deep first pitch. This is insane. I was gonna say a little change up down low, but that really wasn't low, huh? Slider low and in, low and away. And we get him on the check swing. That's the first out, that's huge. Baez is a scary hitter, who's this? Who is this? I don't know who this is. Profar, jerks and Profar. Normally it has a little drop down bar above this, above the score, but we're not, we're not getting that. And 
Oh, that change up hung for sure. And now it's a two run game. Things are getting a little interesting. That was a change up right down the middle. What do I expect? All right, we got the, the bullpen warming up. We can't let this game get away from us. We got Romine and then the leadoff spot up next, I believe. Oh man, we're missing spots. We're getting a little bit of trouble. That's a good four seam. Didn't chase it though. We got a man on first. Tying run up to the plate. Oscar Mercado. Ball one. Oh no. Could this be it? Machado. Throw it to first. Come on, he's got 86 speed. There it is. That's the World Series for the San Diego Padres. We've legit created a super team. This team is insane. So, so good. And I mean, it shows like we won 106 games. We like destroyed most of the teams we faced in the playoffs. A lot of high scoring games for us. And I mean, this team is scary. Like when you have six of your starting nine in the 90s, I mean, we've really created a super team here. A lot of players are starting to hit contract years though. So that's a little bit of an issue, but I think with some, some budgetary, you know, cuts and things like that, you definitely could get this team, you know, within budget, still sign some, a lot of your key players and also like keep you like key players too. So, plus you still got a really good farm system. I don't see why you would have any troubles at all, but let's take a look at this team. Once again, let's see who won the world series MVP as well as the playoff MVP. And let's see what happens. So obviously the Padres won the World Series. Finally, we won a World Series. But um, awards. Michael Conforto, playoff MVP. Travis Jankowski, World Series MVP. Okay. Um, but yeah, he had himself a playoff a playoff run. So, I mean, again, look, look at this team. This is scary. Budget-wise, you got almost $2 million in budget, which is quite a bit. Obviously, Tatis is arbitration. Robles is arbitration. Wilson Contreras could let go, just try to find a little bit younger of a catcher. That's a possibility. Arbitration for Paddock. Um, Erlin, Renfro. You could probably let Erlin go. He's starting to decrease, find another lefty. But for the most part, you're in a really good spot with this team still. And I really like what we were able to put together. And like I've mentioned, you still got really good pitchers in the farm system. This team is scary good so i hope you guys enjoyed today's first off-season rebuild once again if you guys want to see another one 500 likes on this video and i'll do another one tomorrow let me know which team you'd like to see in the comment section down below let's try to keep it to the teams that didn't make the postseason just yet and then once teams start getting eliminated from the postseason we can start doing those teams i hope you guys enjoyed the video i'll catch you on the next one peace